Today we'll be deep diving into tips on improving your render compositions. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm doing a series of videos to help beginners with issues that I see them commonly struggling with in their early renders. I've already created one on lighting, and today we're going to dive into composition. I also want to recommend the book 5 C's of Cinematography. The fundamentals in this book are the backbone of all cinematography, and it's a must read. Now these are just base rules, and sometimes rules are meant to be broken, but you need to understand the rules to know when you should break them. So first up, let's talk about some basic shot types. It's important to understand every shot type and what they're best used for. I'm going to use this simple scene setup here so we can focus strictly on the fundamentals. The wide shot. This is a shot that is far away from your subject and is used to establish the environment, convey distance, or establish who is in the scene. Use this to help viewers gain a sense of space in your scene to give them context for your other close-ups. This is also great to show off character actions such as fights or dances. The cowboy shot. This came about in westerns. It's a character-focused shot that goes from the mid-thigh up. It was popular in westerns because it allowed you to see the gun at their waist, but is useful for focusing on any character when you need to see actions below their waistline. It's also usually used as a heroic shot in a lot of films to display a hero's confidence. Medium shots are a little bit tighter, usually from the waistline up on your character. This is great for showing a character's actions while focusing on one character. It also allows you to focus on the character and the environment at the same time if the environment plays a role in the displayed action. Close-ups focus solely on the actor or subject, and it's intended to remove outside distractions, usually from the chest or shoulders up. This is commonly used in conversations and will reverse back and forth over the shoulder when two characters are communicating. It's important to stay on the same side of the actors when conversing, called the rule of 180. If you flip sides back and forth, it will confuse the audience by making it seem like the characters aren't looking at each other as their eye line flips. We also have the extreme close-up. This is usually from the neck up and is primarily used to dial in on a character's emotional reaction, sometimes getting as close as just the eyes. It's not just distance, but angles that also play a large role in our shots. A canted angle is when the camera's horizon is off angle by a number of degrees. This is usually used to convey something is wrong or surreal. You'll notice it used quite a bit in horror films to contribute to the unsettling vibes. We have low angle shots, which of our subject convey power of the subject focus. You'll see this a lot with villains where they show them at a low angle to make them look more intimidating. High angle shots, as you might expect, have the opposite effect of low angle shots. These make your subject appear weak or overshadowed. So those are the shot types, but that doesn't really tell you how to improve your composition. So let's look up the most basic form of composition. We have the rule of thirds. It's based on the Fibonacci sequence, which is a repeating spiral seen in all aspects of nature and life, and is a universally appealing compositional trick. Blender makes this easy by allowing you to display and overlay. There's a lot to rule of thirds, but in short, you want the line of the focus of your scene up on these lines, with the most important elements landing on the cross points. For example, if we had a character talking, we might put them on the right side with their eyes landing on the point here. The top and bottom horizontal lines are great guides for setting horizon line as well. Some filmmakers break this and center comp everything. This is popular in Wes Anderson movies, for example. There's also other composition guideline presets. Rule thirds is only one compositional guideline. There are plenty other less common ones, and Blender has a bunch built in you can play with and really see how you can create a unique look for your scene. It's important when lining up your composition to consider leading lines. Leading lines are lines in your composition that lead the eye to the subject of focus. Always consider where leading lines are in your composition. They are a strong tool for guiding your user's eyes to focus on what you want. In this example here, we can see the lines are leading our eyes to the human character back here. Hallways, walls, stairwells, and roads are common leading lines used in movies to guide the user's eyes with the environment. A bit about our sponsor. Are you looking to level up your 3D skills? Then a great place to look is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of incredible classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They have classes on Blender, character design, productivity, cinematography, illustration, business, and more. I'm a top teacher on the platform, and I host several Blender courses focused on characters in Blender. It's a great place to start learning Blender as I really focus on kind of the basics in these courses and trying to help level up. In my Your First 3D Animation class, I'll walk you through the process of animating your first 3D character. We'll cover the dope sheet, graph editor, and include free character rigs. This class focuses on the basics and it's made for beginners to Blender. It's curated specifically for learning and there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. It's important to note that focal length plays a large role in how your scene will be conveyed as well. 
This is getting more advanced, but your lens plays a huge role in the composition. The wider the lens length, the more distorted your subject will be, and the further your background will appear from your subject. The longer the lens or higher the number, the tighter and flatter your background will feel. If you want your character to feel suffocated, you might use a long lens to make everything feel tight around them. If you wanted your character to feel lost in a new world, you might use a wide-angle lens to make the world seem extra big around them. Wider lenses are great for showing off vast environments, and long lenses are really great for macro shots of tiny objects. 35 to 50 millimeter is around what normal eyes see without any major lens, and thus they're some of the more common focal lengths used in shots. Depth of field is related to your f-stop and lens, and generally speaking, longer lenses will have kind of more depth of field, meaning that they will have more blur in their background and what less things in focus, whereas wider shots will have more things in focus and less blur. Of course, there's instances where this is not true. So the lower the number you set on the blender f-stop, the blurrier the background will be. And this can be used stylistically. For example, I use lower numbers in my scenes to, because I want to give the illusion I'm photographing toy-sized objects. However, Blender's camera system's pretty good now, and a lot of times if you set correct f-stops at correct scale, it will blur accordingly. The shallow depth of field allows you to really focus on your subject. No depth of field makes it easier to see everything going on in the environment. For example, if you were showing off a fight scene, you probably would want to keep everything in focus, or if you were showing a tight close-up of an important object, you'd probably want to keep everything around that object out of focus. Lastly, let's talk about movement in our shots. Movement can add a lot of emotion or importance to your final composition. Dollying in is where the camera moves towards your subject. This is great for communicating importance or focus on your subject. This is used a lot to slowly bring the viewers into a character as they deliver an important piece of dialogue. There's dollying out, which is when the camera moves away from your subject and is good for distancing yourself emotionally from the character. It can also be used as a reveal, for example, dollying out to reveal something else in the scene. Panning is when you move the camera left or right. This is great for following your subject, revealing a landscape, or changing the camera's focus from one subject to another. Tilting is when you tilt the camera up or down. This is used a lot to convey a sudden shift in depth. For example, if a character is on a ledge and you want to reveal the depth of the drop. Zooming is when you zoom in with your lens, but don't move the camera. Usually this is used to dramatically reveal something closer in the frame. This has kind of been so overdone that now it's mostly used for comedic effect. And then of course the handheld camera, which you can kind of fake by adding randomizers on the F curve of the position and rotation of the camera. And the handheld camera is exactly what it says. It's used to disorient the viewer or communicate a sense of excitement within the camera. A lot of action scenes now use handheld cameras. If you're looking for a little bit of extra help, check out this camera add-on, which has a bunch of preset camera motions in it, which were actually made by an actual cinematographer. So a lot of these are like great motions that you might not think of on your own. I personally like to use this a lot to kind of drag and drop into my scene and really test out what might work in my scene quickly before moving on to kind of my final results.